Hmm. Okay, just trying to use a new gadget. Um, wanna see if you Yeah. So I think we're good. Um, and it's not gonna drop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm getting ready to leave Singapore. I bless the Lord. He's been so good. I'm telling you, I've seen so much, learned so much, uh, grown so much, and I don't know why we are going crooked. Um, but I promised that I was going to do a video in Singapore. So this is me keeping my promise because the word, the Lord does not like um, a, a promise breaker, a covenant breaker. Yeah, the Lord doesn't like that. So we have to learn to keep our word. And as I was packing up, getting ready to leave, the Lord said, say something, you know, do something and um, keep your word. And um, my gadget keeps going. Kando, Kando. Give me just a sec. Let me check what's up with my gadget. Why are we going candle candle? Okay, you're holding fine. Okay, oh well. Anyway, um, yeah, so I finally got hold of this gadget that I'd gotten some time back when um, last year, I think I was heading out to the UK and I decided to ask, is there something that helps to hold up a gadget if you wanna do an online broadcast anywhere? And yeah, there was actually something. But it's so tiny, it gets lost very easily. So, and now it's doing like a combo thing. Anyway, so the role of the prophetic. Um, I forgot to check how many people had watched that video. Um, all right, so good morning uh, from uh, Mosongo Irungu, Sarah Mosongo Irungu in uh, Nairobi, I believe it is. Ukutuko uh, afternoon, by the way. Eh? It's like one o'clock. Uh, Grace Kiambi, uh, hi Apostle, hi Grace, and Salome saying good morning as well. Um, it's good to travel, by the way, because part of what it does is that it helps us to realize that kuna watu wengine wanaendanga mbali mbali. And uh, yeah, that sometimes you can be like, good morning, and you're so sure that everybody, for everybody, it's morning. So be a bit more sensitive and be a bit more international. So it does that. It helps us to do that. So Singapore is really, really beautiful. Um, if it's a place where you'd like to come and visit, come and visit. But it's very, very expensive as well. It's a really, really expensive town. Oh, this gadget story. Okay, I'll get it right. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's really, really beautiful, but it's really, really expensive. No sound? Hmm. How is there no sound? Can you guys hear me? That would be really strange, Grace, because um, I, thought, I thought I was being heard. Hopefully it's just on your end, um, and even that will be resolved. It's just the enemy trying to tantrum. So the role of the prophetic, I'm going to go on by faith, believing that there is um, some sound. The role of the prophetic, as I was saying earlier, you do need to watch the earlier video. Um, if um, uh, Thank you, guys. Thanks for confirming, gentlemen, that uh, there is sound here. You know, by the way, guys, you have to understand that these videos from Sozo Church are really attacked by the enemy. So always just... Um, arise against whatever it is that's trying to throw a tantrum and everything i've been told all sorts of things including that it goes the screen goes completely white when you're trying to watch it so just know what you're dealing with it's the enemy who's trying to attack you trying to stop you from uh, from 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 hearing from the lord so just learn that as well just get to learn that this is warfare and it's really really serious warfare so anyway, I've got a really short time uh, before I have to actually get out. Then I catch a flight to Sydney. Um, if you're in Sydney, uh, you can still get in touch with me, hopefully. So <laughs> yeah, because um, I'll be arriving uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Uh, I'll be, I should be there by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's a bit of a long flight. It's a seven hour flight. <clears throat> I've had some serious jet lag, yani, 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 but it is well. I've been keshain, which is great, and uh, just spending time with the Lord uh, because my body doesn't recognize the sleeping hours for these sides. But it is well. In all things, we bless the Lord and also even for the opportunity to be able to go outside the country, be able to minister outside the country, be able to, um, you know, I think I realized at some point that I have I've never like truly prayed for Asia. I've prayed for India because I traveled there some years ago. But Asia as a continent, you know, like groaning for it. I, I've never really taken time to do that. And guys, they really need our prayers, you know. We get so often uh, caught up in praying for Europe, get so often caught up in praying for America or whatever it is. But man, these guys really, really, really need us. They really need us to pray. I mean, really, can you imagine India with all its population 
the way it's like times three Kenya or maybe times four Kenya probably, maybe even more than that, they've only got 2% Christians. There's a lot of work to be done. I found myself even asking the Lord, okay, Lord, so as Nairobi is so crowded, uh, maybe it's time for me to come out into Asia that, that doesn't really get to hear the gospel. Uh, but the Lord was very clear that as much as Nairobi is crowded with churches, there's quite a bit of... Um, uh, unreached, you know, if you can imagine uh, six per only 6% of Nairobians go to church. I mean, how serious is that? This, you guys, we actually have a real, real problem. Yeah. Lynette, I miss you too, honey. Miss you so much. Thanks for keeping the flame alive as I'm away. Thank you so much. And uh, let's keep the intercession going. So, uh, the role of the prophetic. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, let me repeat it again. You do need to watch the first video so that this one can make a lot more sense uh, than the first video. So last time we talked about what prophetic is not. It's not. It's not a thing that we use to get a word from the Lord. It's not a thing that we use to know what God wants about my life. It's not, it's not foretelling and it's not uh, divination and it's not, you know, uh, reading of palms and telling you, I don't know what that is satan's work yeah that's not that's not god's work um for the prophetic is used for the church the glorification of the, the the raising up of the church and the body of christ as a whole so it cannot be used for just one individual um although the lord does care about one individual enough to give you a word for them from time to time but that cannot be what it's reduced to and uh, the prophetic is really god's compass it's really um, what God does is that God reaches out to a mortal human being and gives them their, his heart, allows them, a mortal human being to know what heaven um, is, the will of heaven, you know, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you know, so what is God's will? So that is the Lord speaking to us. And even then, um, th that then means that there, there's a very large degree of prophetic that every Christian actually does have yeah every christian has because we we hear his voice hmm, that would be room service letting me know that it's time to leave anyway i'll call them back oh okay yeah so just i'll call them back so anyway um you know they're just gonna keep calling me so the the role of the prophetic is really um what happens is that the lord will give you visions the lord will give you direction the lord will speak to you the lord will guide you on various things um uh, with regard to his agenda on earth his agenda in heaven uh his re re his agenda and where where human beings are at the word of god says i think it's amos amos 3 7 um that the lord does not do anything without speaking to his servants the prophets so the lord will normally speak to his prophet and tell him i'm gonna destroy this land um the time of judgment has come for this land the i'm not pleased with this or there's a warning on this and that and the other or um the lord will also sometimes speak and say i am pleased with this and they need to know that they're on the right direction um you know there's danger there's so the, he'll normally warn he'll normally um also exalt he'll normally rebuke he'll use um and and all the time within his word every time within his word there is no prophecy that exists outside of the word of god the lord does not um speak outside of his word he doesn't he never does so for example the lord will never tell you um you know uh the lord will never give a warning and say uh leave leave your spouse right now and and go and live with uh you know um live in a in a in a I'm just trying to find some really wild prophecy that someone could be giving. Eh? The Lord also does not use prophecy to shame us. He never uses prophecy to shame us. So I found that whenever the Lord gives me a prophetic word for somebody that could um, embarrass the person, the Lord always tells me, remove the microphone and speak it to their ear. Speak it to the person. Don't announce it. So whenever you find somebody is prophesying and, and um, you know, shaming people and saying you're wearing this color of underwear and I don't know you slept with who and I don't know you did what, that's not normally of God. It's very rare that the Lord has told me to announce something about someone's sin, something shameful about somebody on a microphone. Very, very rare. Sometimes it does, but it's very, very rare. Uh, then, of course, you know, prophecy is not drama and theatrics. It is not. So you can't have a situation where, um, you know, you're saying, can I prophesy? And then people are shouting, prophesy. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. I mean, I saw that and I was in shock. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. It's, it's, it's not theatrics. And it's such 
a shame that we would reduce the word of God to something like that. Oh, I'm really having trouble with this, um, my gadget. It's really giving me trouble. Yeah, so um, it's not any of that. And, and, and if we really, really understood the prophetic, and I'm gonna clearly have to do another video, we would then respect it more. Um, there's an aspect of also fear uh, of, of the prophetic in terms of if you're walking in sin, um, but if you're not walking in sin, it's something that we believe God for, but also to remember that the prophetic is just one of the fivefold ministries. It's not better, it's not stronger. In fact, the word of God is very, very clear that prophecies will fade. And if you don't have love, even if you prophesy, you are nothing. You're just like a sounding gong, as in you're just making a lot of noise for people. And it's really, really nothing. And, um, but bottom line of the prophetic is the prophetic is the heart of god it's the word of god it's the heart of god it's the compass of god it's a guideline of god it's the voice of god and um the other thing is for those that desire to be prophets it's important to note that it's a very very scary office it actually takes the grace of god not to go mad i shared the last time how you can be driving or you're walking or you're somewhere and you can, your spiritual eyes are opened as a prophet and you begin to see the demons and all that oh my goodness i don't even know what's going on with this thing it's just and you think it's reacting to the sun okay guys i think this gadget of ours is not going to allow us to oh it's actually sliding there we go it's sliding and holding on okay i think i'm just gonna end it here okay well we're out so let me try again Let's see if i get it right yeah so guys just to say the prophetic is it's it's not a small thing it's more a small thing it's smaller it's a very very big responsibility um many other times that you know i actually weep for my husband you know i look at my husband i weep for him i weep for my children because i'll go through seasons when i'm not sleeping because of something god has given me like for real not sleeping as in you're going uh it's been three days since you last slept it's been four days you're not sleeping and if you sleep you sleep just a little bit and then you know you're even woken up by a dream of the same thing and and what happens is that you have a burden for something until it ends until it ends so i mean well for me i think i would say my my the, the greatest example i can use of how the prophetic is not a joke how the prophetic requires grace is the 18 months of praying for the nation of kenya and the thing is that's all you can talk about that's all you can think about that's all you can do whatever and it actually affects various uh, aspects of your life so that even just being able to to live your life a normal life requires prayer requires grace many other times that i tell the lord lord just give me a, a few hours give me a few hours let me relate in a normal way you know my children are coming home let me relate in a normal way until they sleep then we can continue from there you know so it's i hear people saying how they desire the prophetic and all that and i look and you know i have confessed earlier that um and, and i would never tell you to do this i mean never ever do this it really grieves the holy spirit that in 2008, I told God, I don't want, I don't want this prophetic gift. I don't want it. I don't want it because you see things. Okay, at least now one of the things God has done is that he's taught me. At that time, I was a younger prophet. One of the things God has done is that he's taught me that ours as prophets is to release the word of God. And then after that, what happens is not us. Yeah. So we will intercede. We will press in. We will pray. Um, and of course, you know, that takes again another level of prophecy because a lot of people will prophesy and they want the prophecy to come true so that people can know that they are prophets. Yeah. But the real heart of the prophetic prophesies, if it prophesies something that's not so good, um, normally you will be pleading with God and it's okay if people think you're not a prophet because you know you are. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, what to do is that you're pleading with God to have mercy. And, and normally what I found about God is that there are two levels of prophecy, especially the the scary prophecy. One level actually tells you, you know, that um, 
okay and the lord is actually telling me i need to go otherwise these guys are going to start giving me trouble with charging me for the day so one level of prophecy will tell you that uh you know it's gonna happen yeah i'm informing you because i need to keep my word that's the lord saying but it's gonna happen so there's nothing you can do about it but even then you still always try to plead with the lord then there's another one where you know it's just a warning and the lord is uh looking for a man who will stand in the gap so you begin to stand in the gap and begin to press in and to pray but a lot of things also that the lord will tell you can't even tell anybody you can't you know a lot of things that happen with prophets is that if you tell anyone if you tell people number one the lord will always tell you okay there are those moments he'll tell you you can share this or you cannot share this then the other thing that the lord will normally do is that if you you begin to learn that if you tell people everything they begin to think you're crazy and there's something wrong with you and you know that's how people get committed you know to mental asylums and everything like i shared the last time a lot of people who are actually committed into asylums are actually not mad yeah they are probably just prophets uh who are seeing into the spiritual hearing the spiritual and all that so as you desire to have the prophetic uh check your motives check your reasons why if you think uh, it's really cool to take a microphone and say that says the lord and you really love how the person gets a show and you love how people look at them please note that uh, there's much more to it than that prophets normally will cry a lot prophets will normally struggle with a balancing between the normal and the supernatural uh prophets by the way if you're a prophet one of the things that happens is that you you the lord is appears to be more harsh with you than with other people other people get away with anything i can't get away with taking a glass of wine i can't it's not one of the things i can do there are places i cannot go and you know i i used to think it's normal but then i started realizing that people live in different levels and the prophet knows the heart of god so there's a place you could be heading into and god says no you can't yeah um the relationships you cannot have there they stock you cannot have because also the gifting is in your mouth so there are things you can't say so a lot of times you'll be very you can be very, actually prophets are normally very antisocial very very antisocial um because you'll be in a place and everybody's making small talk da, 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 da. but for you you're always checking can i say this can i not say this um is this okay is this not okay and after some time what actually happens is that you just learn to keep quiet you learn to keep quiet unless it's very very necessary to speak the other thing that god does with a prophet is that you're speaking with people and you can hear what they're thinking so you can hear what they're saying but you can also hear what they're thinking and it's a tough balance you know looking at somebody and them saying one thing but they're thinking another thing and um you have to have the maturity to be able to love the people anyway uh you have to have the maturity not to judge you have to have the maturity not to go talking about what the lord is showing you because these are god's secrets and god reveals to us so that we can pray so that we can know how to love people so that we can know how to minister to people so it's 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 a beautiful gift in that way um because you 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 have information but very often the information is too much and then that information actually changes you as a person and you can't enjoy the life that other people will normally enjoy um you you will you know like for the nation of kenya for example i'm meeting people i'm meeting all sorts of people who are like oh yeah finally you know um Uru and Raila have agreed and you know as a prophet you just look at people you just look and you say it's not over and guys are like what do you mean and you know it's very annoying you know for people because like it's not over keep praying why is it not over then people of course want you to tell them stuff yeah um they want you to tell them what God has said da, 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 da. and by the way um believers as well as unbelievers can be extremely manipulative and they get very angry if you don't tell them but you have to remember that you're not uh jack and the beanstalks you know that giant and the the fable and you know the goose that lays the golden egg so that's the other thing you don't prophesy because people said prophesy you prophesy based on what god says so there's a a side of a prophet that has to be very obstinate you know especially when it comes to human beings there's a side of a prophet that um you know will not will go against the grain will not go with people you know um yeah but i've got to go at this point but just to help you understand and to help this video is is meant to help to demystify the prophetic and also to help the children of god stop producing the prophetic to divination 
and to understand that when a prophetic word is given, there's always an action that must follow a prophetic word. God doesn't speak for the sake of speaking. He, he doesn't do idle words like we do as human beings. He, when he speaks, there's an action that must follow. You know, even when the Lord says, I am pleased with you, what's the action that follows? You bow and you worship him and you love on him and you tell him, Lord, may it always be so. May you show me what it is that pleased you, that Lord, I may continue to please you. May I remain in that position of pleasing you. And Lord, may I remain humble. May I never think that I'm better than anybody else because you said that you're pleased with me. So there's always an action for the prophetic. And once the prophetic is spoken, what determines whether the word comes alive, especially if it's a word that's personal to you, is whether you believe it and when you believe it, whether you receive it. So to be able to speak, if you look at uh, the situation of, um, of, of Hannah, uh, crying for a baby and the priest standing up, what the priest did was move in the prophetic. And he said that it's granted unto you. And what did Hannah do? She didn't continue praying. She didn't continue crying. She got up, she ate something, and she started to rejoice in the Lord. So you see um, a scripture written on the song of Hannah. Yeah? But a lot of people, you're told, you're going to have a baby. And then you don't even go shopping. You don't um, rejoice in the Lord. Uh, and if you do, it's short-lived. And after that, you please pray for me. Please stand with me. You know, oh, I'm so discouraged. I'm so... So the word that was spoken on you actually falls. So that's part of, by the way, the frustrating part of being a prophet, that you give somebody a word, but they don't believe. They don't believe, or they believe for that moment, and they don't get it. And here's the thing. When the prophetic is released and, 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 and it sinks... As a prophet, you feel the relief. You actually feel the relief. You can feel it. You feel, yeah? But when it's not received, the word continues to burn. And in fact, it turns into grief. And you begin to weep. And you, you're left to minister to the heart of God. Because, you know, people have rejected God and rejected the word of God. And you feel sorry for them because you also realize that a lot of people also don't have faith. They want a prophetic word, but they don't have faith to carry the prophetic word, which is really, really sad because the prophetic word is supposed to be released so that then it can be a seed inside of you. Then you take care of it and you grow it and you nurture it. And then it comes to, it comes to, it comes to pass, not so that the prophet may be glorified, but so that God may be glorified uh, for the edification of the church. And it's a sign, miracle sign and wonder. It's one of the things about the prophetic. Good to see you too, Magim. I love you, Han. All right, guys, so let me check out um, and sort out uh, these issues of bills and all that. Then uh, head out to Australia where I'll be ministering in Sydney. I bless the Lord for the opportunity and the brethren there. Um, quite some exciting time of ministry there. So if you are in that area, you can get in touch with us so that we can let you know exactly where we are going to be. I will be posting the name of the church tomorrow because I think I was told, but I kind of forgot. Um, so I will give you those details if you're in the um, uh, Sydney area. Others, God bless you guys so much. Love you. Continue to pray for me as I'm outside um, in the field. Um, the, mission t uh, the mission field is actually a battlefield. Eh? So don't be fooled by the names. Don't be fooled by the whatever may look like bliss and all that. It's a battlefield. And um, normally we need the saints to stand with us and to pray with us and to, 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 to just intercede um, even as the Lord leads. God bless you so much. I love you guys. I've really missed you. I'm terribly jet lagged by the way. I'm struggling to concentrate. But it is well. God is faithful. And we thank God for the biological clock that he gives us that is able to, you know, keep tabs of where we are and where he's placed us and all that kind of thing. He's grace is sufficient. I bless the Lord. And so far, the Lord has been wonderful. He's been wonderful. He's been wonderful. <sighs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you guys so much. Amen. Shalom.